So once again, good to have Brother Mike here showing us one way that we can preach without without saying a word. But if we do that, we need to be ready to give an answer when they come and ask what that sign is all about. But during the Vietnam War, an F-4 was uh, was nearly missed by a missile. Though. That missile knocked down all the navigation antenna. So this F-4 was flying over enemy territory in the weather at night with no way to know where it was going. The rescue people were trying to figure out where to go. Figured he'd probably ditch in the sea, but the guy didn't know where he was. And so he asked him, can you tell me where you are and where you're going? I said, no, I'm lost, but I'm making record time. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect picture of the world today. Fast moving, faster than ever before. We have fast transportation, fast internet, fast communication, fast everything. And yet a world with absolutely no destination of where it's going. He talked, he talked about uh, Corvettes uh, there in Sunday school. Now, my Corvette's pretty fast too. But without a destination, it's absolutely worthless, right? Well, Mary and I just got back from a very great vacation. We had a destination in mind, but it was a place we never heard of before. We had navigational aids. We had a government to direct our paths. We had a map to show us an overview of the area. We had information of dangers of that area from research we had studied. All, uh, we, all were needed as we had never heard of this place. Show of hands, how many have ever heard of Brian Head, Utah? Yep. You have, I'm impressed. <laughs> Brian Head, Utah. No, no. I had neither. I've heard of Utah. Yeah, I've heard of Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of help in church. Right. <laughs> so, never heard of this place, so we needed all this to find it. We landed in Salt Lake City, we rented a car, and we started driving south on I-15. It was a fast, straight road with all kinds of people traveling with us. Mary loved that, right? <laughs> well, without a map, we couldn't make record time on here. But all we'd be doing is enjoying, enjoying the scenery with no idea of how to get to our destination. The speed limit there was 80. And Mary absolutely loved it. That's why I snuck up to 90 every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but without a map, once again, we'd be going 90 miles an hour to get to absolutely nowhere. We made our destination because someone gave us a, uh, the uh, destination, they gave us the directions how to get to that destination, and by calling we were accepted at a destination before we even got there. Without those, we'd have been in Utah with no understanding of where to go. And that's much like our journey to heaven. With that, please stand and give honor to the Word of God and turn to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. So Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many of there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look at your word today, I pray that everyone in this church is on the straight and narrow, entering the straight gate and traveling at the straight gate. And Lord, thank you for everyone here who is doing exactly that. And Lord, if there's anybody here who's still on that wide road, making record time with no idea where they're going, but their destination is the lake of fire. I pray, Lord, that today's message will prick their hearts, and they will be gloriously saved for uh, your glory and our joy. And they will see the reason that they need to go on that straight and narrow. They will see the reason that the destination is far more important than the journey. And they will see that the journey is an abundant life of service to you, where we will then get to our destination and here. Well done, good and faithful servant, and a vow and joy of the Lord. And Lord, give us encouragement of why we should stay in that straight and narrow, and give us the understanding that on that, you have us to do work, and your work is to call others to that same road, to call others to Jesus Christ and his cross, that they may be covered by the blood of Christ shed for the remission of sins. We ask all the precious sons in your name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, may be soon. <clears throat> Satan's road to hell is fast, straight, smooth, with all kinds of traffic, and everyone encouraging each other on that road. With much company, they're all making record time to an eternity in hell. With Satan, who designed this fast road system for the, uh, for the privilege of having the flesh enjoy it. Driving fast, living fast, and seeking to satisfy the flesh quickly, with absolutely no destination in mind. Why slow down for a destination we know nothing of? We might get lost and lose out on the fun on this fast road. 
Satan has taken God's gift uh, for spiritual uh, joy and corrupted them to satisfy the flesh in this world. To satisfy the flesh, turning all the very good creation he made into sinful enjoyment of taking away his glory that we may glorify ourselves and not him. This is a road we're all born on. Every one of us was born on this road. We're all fallen. Traveling to hell as fast as we can along the flesh to enjoy Satan's sin for a season. Missing the drive that would showcase God's glorious creation on straight and narrow. Seeing all the glories he has for us. Having spiritual joy instead of uh, going for the flesh and then coming to the destination with him forevermore. To have a person leave that fast lane for a better destination of delayed spiritual gradu uh, gratification, excuse me, we need to have a few things to understand. I mean, how many of you like to drive fast on an expressway? My wife's hand's not up, but that's beside me. <laughs> so, if you want to get people off that, off that uh, uh, very fast road, very smooth road, very straight road, you have to give them a reason to do so. First of all, they must know of a destination that's better than the destination they're going to, and why it is better than a destination they're heading toward. Then, they must know how to get there. If you have no idea how to get there, you're never going to get there, right? And they must understand the dangers of staying on the road that they're on. Discerning the road signs to lead them from eternal hellfire to eternal safety and grace under our Lord Jesus Christ. So to have somebody leave Satan's fast lane, he must see three things. He must see the danger, he must see the destination, and he must have directions. So the danger. On any road in America, there are warning signs to alert drivers to dangers. You get lane closures. You have steep curves. You have accidents ahead. You have steep grades. We saw all those in Utah. You know, they're there to make sure that we are safe on the road we are traveling. Satan will place warning signs on his highway to hell to make it seem like he is actually concerned about your welfare. He's not, but he makes it seem like it. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 14 says this. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. His goal is not your eternal safety, but band-aids over the cancer of sin to make you think that you can continue to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season on his highway that will lead straight to hell. Think about all the things he puts out there. Uh, masks are stressed in this world today, the church and everything. But repentance isn't stressed. Tolerance with no mention of sin. Closing churches while leaving liquor stores open. So the flesh can enjoy things all that much more. And they don't have me nagging them about their sin. They keep this, uh, keeping this flesh, yeah, keeping the flesh supposedly safe while ensuring the spirit remains dead. That's Satan's goal. His road signs give a mirage of fleshly safety, but only keeps us comfortable in the flesh with hell as our final destination. The road to hell is crowded. The road to hell is smooth. And the road to hell appears to be heading to a great destination in the flesh. He who dies, the most always wins, right? Yeah, that destination is not a destination I want to go to. But it seems right to a man who, uh, who's looking at the way of eternal death. Who will warn him of the dangers of hell? Who will tell them this road that you're on seems so smooth, seems so good, seems so well maintained, but the destination is not where you want to go. If no signs talk of the dangers of death and spirit, why would they leave this road of sinful delights? Uh, with many proclaiming, it is right. Romans 10, 14 asks, uh, tells us this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I'm a pastor. I reach a certain amount of people. If you say that you're the preacher, you go and uh, do all the work. We're not going to see many people say it. I don't know the people you know. I don't know the circles you walk in. Every one of you needs to be a preacher. That doesn't mean you have to go get a degree at, in uh, some college. That doesn't mean that you have to sit under a pastor to learn how to uh, <coughs> present the gospel from a pulpit. What it means is, when someone asks you a question about how to get saved, you need to be ready. And you need to be telling them you, you better change your ways or you're going to go to hell. That is what being a preacher is. It's not easy to enter traffic and put up a sign 
warning comfortable sinners of the hell they are in. They will mock you. They'll try to tear them down. We see churches burned every day. That doesn't relieve us of the responsibility of getting out and doing it. If no one warns sinners of the hell that the right, right life rolled in, say that five times fast. <laughs> Why would they forsake the flesh and come to the straight and narrow? Who will be the preacher? If not us, then who? If not now, then when? When we see the ones cast into the lake of fire because they were afraid, because we were afraid of offending them, mm -hmm. I wanted to warn them far before that because I want them to be with me forevermore sure. and not a memory that's now burning in hell forevermore. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 22, 30 tells us this. And I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Are you willing to stand in the gap? It's an uncomfortable place to be in this world. But if we're going to get people off that wide road to hell, we have to be the ones to do so. So to enter Satan's wide, uh, enter Satan's wide road to place warning signs is not comfortable. Giving warnings of sin to sinners who do not want to hear it and will attack you for it. But they need to be warned in any way possible. We need to put up those signs. And Brother Mike here is uh, willing to do so. He's willing to go into that highway. He's willing to do the things that uh, require. And people don't want to hear the danger, but he's got the dangers. That first sign right there. 623. Romans 6.23, sign the Romans road. It's the first part that's very important. The wages of sin is death. Just that sign for now. That's the danger. The wages of sin is death. And put that on the uh, chair there if you would. So, is that danger? Wait a second. I've heard there's sin. I know there's sin. I know I'm a sinner. You ask most people if, uh, if uh, they're sinners. Well, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as the other guy. The wages of that sin is death. You have no choice. God is a just God. You earn those wages, He will pay them. That's showing danger. That is showing you better get off that road and get on a different road. So, we have danger. Wage of sin is death. Okay, that's wonderful. I know I'm going to die, I know I'm going to go to hell. What's the point? We can't stop there. Uh, warning signs with no solution are worthless. Which is why we have to show the destination. No, a road closed. You see a road closed ahead. This is on detour. Okay, the road's closed. Great. I want to sit here for five months while I fix the road, right? How much value does that give us? Gives us nothing. If you see a road closed, there's always something to say there's a detour. Go this way. Go that way. Do something. Danger, with no way to avoid that danger, is worthless. All it does is make people frustrated and angry. That's not what we want. Think about a steep curve with no speed limit warning. A very, very tight turn coming up. So tight that if you're not at 15 miles an hour, you're going to go off that road. I think. Just like we were in Brian Head there. <laughs> so, if you hit this, okay, turn ahead. Fine, I got a car ahead. It turns, no problem. I'm going to hit it at 60 miles an hour. Go off that edge. Because it gave you the danger, but didn't give you the idea of how to avoid that danger. About 15 years ago, Sean Best and I went to Virginia with a truck to pick up a Piper Colt. It was in pieces, that's why we had the truck. We rented the truck, we drove down it. We picked it up, we loaded it up, we came back. When we're coming back, we didn't really want to spend much time in New York City. We wanted to get north of New York City before, before morning because we wanted to avoid the traffic. So, Sean's there sleeping next to me. I'm driving, I see construction ahead. There's always construction, who cares? So I'm driving along, construction ahead, I'm doing about 65, there's no traffic, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I say, we want to get north of New York City. So as I'm driving, 2 o'clock in the morning. How many of you are wide awake at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Driving along, sort of safe. And uh, as I'm going, all of a sudden I see the construction ahead of me. After a turn, in about a quarter mile, there's a four-lane highway that goes to one, two lanes over, with Jersey barriers. Whoa! <laughs> I give a yell. I'm turning over. This truck is going, burr, burr. Meanwhile, Sean wakes up and goes, whoa! <laughs> That is an example of a sign that's absolutely worthless. Construction ahead. Okay, fine. Who cares? Right? There's always construction ahead, right? Anyone who's from Michigan knows that you have two, uh, two seasons, winter and construction. <laughs> so it doesn't affect us too much. Construction ahead. One lane. Uh, move over to the left. That would be very helpful. I didn't get it. That's the same thing. We put that out there and don't tell them of a destination that's better to avoid it. 
Satan would never make this mistake. Satan is far smarter than this. His signs give perfect warning to keep you acceptable and comfortable on his wide road. Giving warnings to avoid offending other drivers. Do not swerve off the world's ideas. You'll get hurt. Stay in your lane. That's what he tells you. It's comfortable in your lane. You can drive at 150 miles an hour. I don't care. I kind of like that a little bit. You? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but stay in your lane. You'll be fine. It gives warning to avoid certain exits, lest you waste time in the flesh. Now, how many of you have been out west driving? And you're driving along, there's an exit. There's an exit. And it says, no services. I would anyway. Get off. I don't exit with no services. <laughs> Normally it's for one ranch that lives there. But that's what he's warning you. You get off this wide road, there's no services out there. You need to stay in this road so you can enjoy the flesh, all the desires that I have for you. Uh, so don't get off that road. There's no services. Yeah, it says straight and narrow, but what are you going to do when you get there? There's no fun. There's nothing for the flesh. It goes, and uh, if you get off the wide road, you're going to miss out. Satan uses the sign to keep traffic moving the flesh's way, in the flesh's wisdom, but ignoring the eternal dangers. He lives, Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He tells you you're right. Brother Mike, you've been on this wide road. Tell everybody how wonderful. It's right. It seems right, doesn't it? It seems so right. We were born this way. Why not enjoy the flesh that we were born with? God loves us. He's going to want us to do it. Seems so right, doesn't it? <coughs> and what are the ends thereof? The ends thereof are the ways of death. Because we have ignored his word and put our ideas on it and used the Bible to justify our sin rather than correct our sin. And Satan is good at doing exactly that. Our signs are to show the kingdom of light. Uh, ignored by most, by giving hope to those responding to the danger shown by sin. Mm. No, I'm driving along. Yeah. Been on this road forever. I'm, I'm driving along 120 miles an hour. I look over. Wait, it's in his death. Huh. No. Maybe I get something thinking. So if I get something thinking, you need to keep going with that. That's how advertisement works. It keeps building on things. That's what we need to be able to do. But why do we have a Romans road? Okay? Romans road. Romans 3.23. Uh, for all sin comes forth the glory of God. Is that all we do? No, we keep going to show them how to continue. So, Satan's sin, we see the, the, the wage of sin is death. We see the sin of the license road will lead to that death. We show the dangers of that wages, but if they're not thinking, if they're not, if they don't have anything beyond thinking about, it, it's worthless. To get someone to leave the wide road, we need to show them a better destination. A destination on the straight and narrow with no fleshly services, but with the end, a glorious uh, destination, a place that you will want to be forevermore. So, that's happening. There's a glorious word after that statement. The wage of sin is death. The next sign right there, uh, the second hand thing. But, that's between the two, but connects them. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have given them now the destination. Mary Barber, the wage of sin is death. Your sin is going to lead you straight to hell. There's not a thing you can do about it. And that's a true statement. There's not a thing you can do about it. And but, you know what? Give to God. His eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He died for you. He died to shed his blood. He took your penalty. And if you get off Satan's road that is wide, fast, and in the flesh fun. And follow him, you have a destination in heaven with him forevermore. Now you've given them a destination. You've shown them where is a far better place to go. Now, one sign showing a better destination, quite frankly, is not enough. Every one of us have different ways of looking at things. That's why the Bible's written. You notice the Bible isn't the Romans wrong, that's it. Every one of us has different strengths, different abilities, different emotions, things that will hit us. And we have to be ready to give answers to different people. Driving expressways, you're an advertised destination. Usually has this first sign about 200 miles out. Okay, you're driving along, that eh, looks kind of interesting. Exit 200 miles. Why do they do it so early? Start mulling it over. Start going, you know, that sounds interesting. Then about 50 miles later, oh, that sounds like saying, not quite the same thing, but hmm, that's interesting. As you get closer, they have a sign about every 10 miles. 
then every five miles, you know, this is the destination you really want to go to. And we keep putting it in front of you to show it. Now, most people get, most people hear the gospel, they didn't hear it one time again. So it happens, but it's very seldom. And if I lead someone to Christ by giving them the gospel, wow, I gave the gospel and I got saved. But there is power in one time. I mean, you've probably heard it about 15 times. And you happen to be the one that uh, he accepted. Amen. Amen. But guess what? You didn't say Jesus Christ did. And he used your faith to bring him to that point. Amen. So we're called to be wise servants, the generals doves. You know, why do companies advertise so heavily? Why did they put that sign there 200 miles, then 150, then 125, then 100? Why do they do it? It's because they like spending money. It doesn't like wasting money. No, they do it because it works. And we need to be able to understand that and do the same thing. We must show a proper destination and be ready to ask, answer the questions even before they're asked. Think about it. Will I be accepted in this different kingdom? I've been driving along this so long. I don't have what it takes to be in this kingdom. I don't have any royal robes. They're just talking about being the son of the, the most high God. I don't have all that. Will I be accepted? No. Well, what does Acts 16.31 right there say? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So, okay. No. It doesn't say I have to have any kind of entrance. It doesn't say I have to go to school. It says all I gotta do is believe and I'm gonna be saved. Well, what does that mean? I don't quite understand what that means. Well, I find love. I mean, I, I understand as well. Anyone find love out there? Look at Congress. Any love out there in Congress? <laughs> Will I find love in this world of hate? Well, look at John 3.16. Alpha, he's gonna get his steps today, I bet it is. <laughs> it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So is there love? Yes, there's love. And then the other side. I rebelled against his king. He is love. He said it, but can he love him? me? He doesn't know what I've done. He doesn't know the sinner I've been. He doesn't know that I cannot possibly be accepted by him. He, I'm looking at it. The way you sin is death. He doesn't know what sin I've done. I've earned so many wages, I'm a millionaire. Can he possibly love me? That's John 3, 16, the second half. It says that whosoever believeth on him, should not perish, but everlasting life. Wow. Whosoever? Raise your hand if you're a whosoever. <laughs> so he's answered the question. So we have that ready. And these are people that, are, if they're seeking, they're going to have these questions. And these signs, if they're out there, will show the answers that they need to understand the problem they have and, a problem, and how to get to that destination and be accepted at that destination. Again, the essential farther destination. A destination with a blessed eternity rather than really driving fast like for sinful delights, but never finding any satisfaction on your road to hell. These give satisfaction. They show that you can be part of the kingdom. But, okay, I know the destination I'm going to is not a good destination. I know the destination I'm going to is going to be very hot. We have air conditioning going here. It's not going to be any good in hell at all, trust me. So, this destination I don't want. You get to God eternal life. I can get to heaven. Okay, that's great. But I know somewhere out west there's Brian Head, Utah. I have no idea how to get there. People have no idea how to get to heaven. So we need to give them directions about how to do it. Okay? We've given them the danger. We've given them the destination. Now, while while we strike while the iron's hot, we've got to give them directions how to get there. Signs on an expressway always point to a proper exit with future, further directions in the future. Trust me. Put that big sign up there. Danger ahead. There's a destination. Satan will put down it. No services. Don't bother. He'll do that. That's why we have to be always ready to get out of the signs. Satan's flesh is a natural garment, keeping you in his fast lane, leading straight to hell. The straight and narrow is not listed in this garment. You had a garment today, didn't do you much good, did it? <laughs> the whole garment? He's down there trying to buy cars. <laughs> so that's what Satan's garment does. It's not going to show three and narrow. It's not going to show heaven as destination. That's a spiritual destination. He's got a fleshly garment. Um, you know, Barry always says, trust your garment. But I'm trying to find shortcuts on the map. You know, don't trust your garment here. It's not going to lead you in the right direction. You need an updated garment. Showing spiritual routes and destinations. Now, 
The destination is the Father, as we saw. Um, but it's the garden. John 14, 6. Right there. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only proper destination is heaven. To be adopted by the Father. And we see how to get to this destination here. Okay, Jesus Christ is there. Okay, I understand that. So I have to go through Jesus Christ. Okay, now what? I understand I have to go through Jesus Christ, but how many of you? Uh, how many of you have grandkids that you use the program your garden because you can't figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> so we have the exit. We know the route is Jesus Christ. How do we program this garden? John one one says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Jesus Christ is the Word. The Word is our garment. It shows us the direction. It shows us how to stay in the straight and narrow. It shows us how to be proper uh, citizens of a new kingdom, which we are now heading toward. And that Word is the King James Version of the Bible. You know? He wrote right there, I am the Word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 1 says I'm the Word. So, what are the directions on how to get there? Right here. That's right. And, uh, you want to know why it's a, such a long, beautiful road? That's a pretty tricky garment, isn't it? <laughs> We're going to an eternal, immortal, infinite God. It takes a while to understand how to work in his kingdom. So to find a kingdom, you must go through Christ with the proper visa. Now, if I want to go to a different country, leave this country of America, and go join a different country, there's certain entrance requirements. Those entrance requirements will make it so I can either go there or they'll kick me back out and send me back to where I came from. It's a proper visa. I have to be prepared. Well, there is one in heaven, too. It's a very strict visa. It's a very strict one, and without it, you cannot enter. And that is John 3, 7, the second half. You must be born again. Okay, so now, we have directions. I be born again. These are all signs out there that will get people thinking. And you get them in line like that, they'll read them, and they get led to salvation. Now, hopefully... Now, we have to be ready to give an answer. Hopefully, when you have these, they're going to ask you questions about this. They have a sign out there. What does that mean? He talked about it in Sunday school several times about signs that are out there. People come staring at them, trying to figure them out. Well, that's because they're stuck on that road. Highway to hell. They're yeah. on it. They understand that book. I mean, I know how to make my car go fast. I know how to make it go straight. I know how to get off on the engines that my flesh enjoys. I'm very good at all those things. This exit with no services. Going down a road that looks very bad, I mean, straight and narrow, is a very beautiful road. But Satan's going to hide that. He's not going to make that exit easy. It's going to look like something's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. How do I get there? And so people will start looking at it. They're trying to figure it out. Why are you on that road? I like this road. It's fast. Why? Why, why on earth are you get on that road? I'm looking at there. It looks like there's logs on it and things like that. It looks like it's a horrible road. All kinds of potholes. No, it's not. It's a glorious road. Satan hides everything he can. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, it is a perfect road, and you will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it's a true statement, but they have to be convinced of that. <laughs> That's why you have to be ready to give those answers. So, you must be born again. The kingdom destination requires full acceptance for immigration before you arrive. You know, we talk about DACA and things like that here in the United States. People in the United States, they have to figure out how to go through all the paperwork. They're in the country already, and then and maybe one of these days will be accepted as citizens. You have to be accepted as a citizen of heaven before you arrive. You can't enter and then try to get in. You have to have to be accepted beforehand. And the papers are written in the blood of Christ, shed upon the cross, making your past life of rebellion against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, forsaken, forgotten, cast away, as he took your penalty for that rebellion and allowed you to be saved and allowed you to come into that kingdom by his great gift. Gives God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you understand what that gift is because He shed His blood for me. That's my penalty. That's my death. I don't understand. That's what we need to understand. Satan's fastly is tempting in the flesh. We need to give people a reason to exit that tempting fast lane to find a hidden road with no fleshly services, with a destination that you cannot see from the exit. That destination is first destination is far off. We can't see it in the flesh. We can understand it. We can read about it. We can dream about it. We can think about going there, but we can't see it. All we see is this exit saying no services, going off on a very skinny road 
It looks like it has a lot of curves on it, things like that. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to a beautiful fast road. Mm -hmm. So we give them the reason to seek that exit, and they only do it if they see the dangers of the road they're on. Mm -hmm. They're about designing an eternity in God's destination over Satan's lake of fire. Show them a spiritual rest area to repent of their sins and accept his work on the cross of becoming born again. Once there, give them a new garment. The garment of his word right here. Show them how to use it. Read the Bible. Start the book of John, showing who this Jesus Christ is. Look at the book of Romans, showing what he expects of us. Read and then teach them how to use it. Teach them how to be doctorates in this. I don't mean doctorate in some college. I mean learning how to let the Holy Spirit lead you, guide you, and teach you of his perfect word, that he may lead you to that destination. Having further signs to ensure they stay on a straight and narrow, avoiding temptations to return to Satan's fast lane. No longer making record time, but traveling on a road in his time to his destination. Now, I'm on this road. You know, when I was uh, going down to Brian Head, we figured out what actually it was. You know, 150 miles, 100 miles, 50 miles. How many of you know how many miles were on straight and narrow until we hit heaven? <laughs> I have no idea. The idea is we understand spiritually God is the one that controls it. He will bring us to his destination in his perfect time. People don't like that. How many of you like answers? <laughs> I like answers. But I accept that the God that God's perfect. And he has his answers. they will be the best for me. And I don't need to worry about it. Right. So, we're looking at this. We have two roads. We have the highway to hell. That's and wide. We have a straight and narrow. That goes to God. But you know what? Both of those will enter at the same place roughly. Different destination. But... They're going to have you come in front of a holy God. And that is uh, uh, James 4, uh, Amos, uh, what is Amos? 4, Amos 4, 4, 4, 12, thank you. Prepare to meet thy God. That is what we're teaching them to do. Mary, I talked to you about your sin before. You need to prepare to meet your God. Now the question is, if you're on that wide road, you've been honoring Satan the whole time, you've been rebelling against God the entire time. You've been satisfying the flesh against his holy word. When, you prepare, when you're prepared to meet your God, what do you think he's going to say to you? Do you think he's going to be pleased with the sin you've committed? The mocking of God? The uh, uh, denying of his word? The denying of the gift he did through his son, which he sent for you? There's no way in. There's no way, and you are going to go to hell because of that rebellion. That's going to stay in the past wrong. But you get off that street now. You start driving that street. You start learning this. You won't do it well. I'll tell you that right now. The road, is, the road is not fast. The road is treacherous in many ways. Because Satan hates you. But at the end of that, when you get there, God will see your faith. And he will honor your faith. And he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things. Enter thou into my rest. I will give you control over many. Rule over many. Now, prepare to meet your God. How do you want to prepare? I want to prepare by learning how to use his garment to live his life on his straight and narrow, that we may then go forth, teaching the world of him, teaching the world how to join us on that straight and narrow, understanding that it's not an easy road. We don't know where the destination is. You know, I know it's spiritual. Any of you know the address for heaven? I know the address for heaven. G-O-D. <laughs> That's the only address we have. But the straight and arrow will lead us there. And when you put those signs out, why do we why do why are there signs on the side of the road? Because they work. You know, every one of you is a preacher. Every one of you is a preacher. How many of you are very good at getting out and giving sermons? So Mo's been talking about, he's been, been a little nervous about September coming up. I think he's going to be fine. Probably gonna fire me and hire him. That's the type point. But uh, you know, he's talking about getting out back here. Not everyone can do it. Mary would love to do that, right? In front of 10,000 people? No, you wouldn't know how to do that. There are people who can't do that. But you know what? You can't preach through these signs. That's one tool of preaching. Using that tool, people will see the Word of God. They'll read the Word of God. And as the Word of God says, it's not your wonderful eloquence. You, know, you get famous preachers up there. I saved 10,000 people at the revival last week. No, you didn't. You saved nobody. You brought the Word in front of people to allow Jesus Christ to uh, reveal himself, and they got saved. And by the way, it wasn't 10,000, one person, 10,000 times. That's what they got to remember. And we need to 
make sure that everyone sees the sides. Mm -hmm. There. Some of you may be very good talking. Good, use that word. Some of you may be very well put the signs out. Putting, uh, knowing where to place them. Good, do that. The whole thing is God uses all those strengths in different ways. Mm -hmm. Because you will, uh, you will reach different people. You know? Some people, visual learners. Mm -hmm. huh. Some people, oral learners. I can talk to them and they'll understand. But don't think God uses all those if you do it in faith and he will empower you mm -hmm. to reach the heart of those who need to So allowing uh, it allows confidence to continue our spiritual journey as Satan seeks to pull up spiritual roadblocks. Part of our journey is to seek others to join us. Turn over to Acts chapter 1 real quick. Verses uh, uh, 4 through 8. So Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. This is a witness right here. This is a witness showing the world that you are not ashamed of the gospel. You cannot be ashamed of the gospel if you're putting the gospel out in front of your house, right? So you're showing you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're showing them the, the dangers of staying on their highway to hell. You're showing them the destinations far better and the directions to get there. So use your spiritual garment to put up signs showing God's constant love uh, in the spiritual fast lane. Uh, learning of him to teach others uh, as the joint heir of our king. So every one of you who are here, you are in the royal family. You are a prince or princess. You have the position. Think about the position you have. If God was to die tomorrow, Tom Wilt may be selected to be the God of the universe. Now, there's a caveat to that. God's not going to die. But we see the position by his love that he has given us. That is a position that requires a lot of responsibility. That is a position that shows the, uh, shows the position we have for all eternity. So if you're mocking this world by Satan, who cares? I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir of Jesus Christ. I'm an adopted brother of the king. I'm a prince in heaven. And you're going to say you've got something better than that for me down here? Give me a break. So we travel on that straight and narrow to produce fruit for his kingdom, to do his work. So John 15, 8 reminds us, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And as we see from Acts, that fruit is to be witness. Matthew's version of the Great Commission adds to this to make disciples of those we witness to. We're supposed to continue to teach them. Mm -hmm. Show them how to program their garment. Show them how to use this to live effective lives for him. Show them how to be holy as he is holy. That when we get to heaven, we can hear those great and wonderful words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Now in this church, I believe that most if not all of us have taken uh, the exit off the fast lane to travel Christ straight and narrow. He looks to call others to do that same thing. Giving them a reason to leave the flesh's pleasures of sin for a season to travel God's glorious road of future bliss. Now, if not us traveling already, who's going to do it? And if not now, then when? The Lord asked that question. Producing his fruit helps keep us on the straight and narrow. It helps keep us focused on his work. It helps keep us focused on his mission. Doing so makes it so we don't turn back to the, uh, to the uh, wide road to hell. Now, if you get there, you're not going to go to hell. You've been adopted. You're son of God. Maybe you decide, you know, I kind of like that. And you get back on the wild school backslide. Well, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about that. You do that, it says you will be saved, but you will suffer loss. You're supposed to stay in this room. Why did you get back? I called you this. You are part of my royal family, and you neglected your duties. You're not going to have the rewards that you expected. That's what we need to remind them when they're on the street and narrow. So once again, Mike Vista over here has shown us how to use signs to call people off that highway. Signs showing the dangers of hell on Satan's highways. Signs showing a better spiritual destination. 
showing reasons to forego pleasure and sin for a season to look forward to eternal pleasures with the Heavenly Father. And that's what uh, Dr. Ketch talked about. Pleasure is there, period. Satan provides pleasure. If sin wasn't fun to the flesh, we would have no problem avoiding it, right? So, the question is, do you want pleasures for a very minimal amount of time that provide no satisfaction, that always makes you looking for more and never able to come to any kind of uh, closure in this world? Right. Or do you want eternal pleasures That's with right. him? Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing by showing them that destination. Mm -hmm. And then science showing how to use the Bible as a spiritual garment. Learning and showing a need to sign our immigration papers written in his blood, pardoning our sinful rebellion against his kingdom. And we're going to close with uh, back to uh, Romans again, Romans 10. We're going to read a little bit more from uh, 14 to 17. So now we're in Romans chapter 10, starting at verse uh, 14. Think about this as you're reading this. Think about that guy traveling 120 miles an hour down that road going straight to hell, just yahooing it all the way. He was screaming out and heading straight to hell, getting closer and closer to that fire. So that, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as I have said, Lord, who have believed our report. So that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, once again, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How do you get saved? That's what comes from the Bible. See the signs laid out here? All out here? Kind of looks like an expressway, doesn't it? <laughs> this is Satan's highway to hell. On Satan's highway to hell, Satan can't stop the word of God. He'll do everything he can. He'll chop it down. He'll make it illegal. He'll do everything he can. You know what? You get out there and put these signs out there. I'm looking at all the signs like just like express. Who remembers the old Burma Shave commercials? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a Burma Shave. All kinds of things all the way through, leading you in a certain direction. That's what the Romans road is. This is just a different way of the Romans road with all this. And if you show these signs out there, you know, if we all put signs out there, and people kept riding, What's that? God will use it to prick their hearts. You know, the Holy Spirit pricks us of our sin. You know, convinces us of our sin. Most of us ignore it. We kind of like our sin. So we ignore it. But if you keep seeing these signs, God will use the Holy Spirit to get out there and do things. Why do you think most churches don't have Bibles anymore? Why do you think they're trying to ban Bibles from schools? Because Satan knows that the Word of God works. So we need to go against the grain to put these signs out. Once again, these signs are one way to preach. Tools to draw people to his word that we then lead them to Christ, to their salvation. Without a preacher, nobody would take an exit hidden by Satan to, uh, to go to a, uh, what looks like a barren exit with uh, straight and narrow with no services for the flesh. Why would anyone take it? <laughs> Unless someone tells them there's something down there at the end, they're not going to take that. They never will. That's why they have to have that preacher. So they can hear about, why would I take this sign with no services? There's nothing there. There's no sex, no drugs, no rock and roll. My flesh likes those things. There's nothing there. Why would I take it? It needs the preacher, which is you, to tell them why to take it. That's right. That's good. There's something far better at the end of that road. Take it, get off this road. This road leads to hell. And you're going you're gonna to meet thy God one way or the other. Don't go this way. It's judgment. Go this way. Will be accepted right. So our road on the straight and narrow is getting shorter. Our time in this age is running out. Again, I don't. I, there's no signs there saying how far it is, but I can feel it getting closer. Anyone here have any doubts of that? Mm -hmm. We will soon see our heavenly Father prepared to meet Thy God. For those saved by our preaching, led by His Word, will be with us for joy forevermore. Think about the people you, that uh, you were introduced to Christ. You'll be with them forevermore, with them thanking you, even as they mocked you on this earth. Mock me for a couple of years here versus seeing him saved and being with me forevermore in heaven, thanking me for introducing me to Jesus, which we would rather have. 
So prepare to meet thy God, and the question is, are you ready? So with that, I want to go to prayer. And we just came out of revival, right? We just came out of revival? I feel revived. How many here are feeling revived from? So, we came from a revival. What do you do with a revival? Revival is to bring back to life that which has died. This church, I hope, is much more alive. This church, I hope, is wanting to do more for God. Wanting to do something. But we have a lot of different ideas of outreach. This is one way. So, if you have a better way, your strength might be better for you. Use it. For those of you who have looked at signs, use them. The purpose is have the Holy Spirit guide you to what you need to do. So as we go to prayer, I'm going to go silently for a second. First of all, thank God for the fact that somebody showed you a far better destination. That somebody showed you to leave that exit that you were, that leave that highway that you were enjoying so much in your flesh to uh, go on that straight and narrow looking for a better destination. And someone gave you the direction of the Bible. Thank God for it. And then ask God, you've accepted in your family. What have me to do. Be like Isaiah. As God asked, Who shall we send? And he said, Here am I, send me. And do what you need, do what you can do. Now, God never asks you to do what you cannot do. He asks you to do what you can do. You know? I'm very shy, I can't speak. Let them speak for you. Or, I'm, so you give, are you giving, he, Mary says, I got to get to Gab. I don't know if you agree with that. Now, I got to get to Gab. <laughs> so, Mary may not. She'll put the signs out there and bring me to talk about it. That'd be fine. You know? Having more people around is fine. But the whole thing is figure out what we can do to bring forth his truth to get people off that highway to hell and back on the straight and narrow. Amen. And then thank God for the salvation that he's going to use you. So let's go, uh, go, let's go to prayer silently for just about 30 seconds or so, then I'll close this. Dear Heavenly Father, so thankful you have raised up people to bring forth your gospel, to show people the reason that they need to get off that wide road to hell and get on your straight and narrow. If you be there to find it, but Lord, I'm thankful that someone showed me that path, that someone showed me how to take that proper exit, showed me how to stay in that straight and narrow, and showed me how to avoid getting back off, taught me in the Bible, Lord, made a disciple out of me, and Lord, there's so many here that can say the same thing. And Lord, we have people do that for us. How can we then say, I can't do it? Lord, use us in your great work. Use us in uh, presenting your great gospel. Use us in a great and mighty way. For Lord, it is not us, but it's you working through us. Let us allow the Spirit to speak forth your words to reach people's hearts that are still there to be saved. In those fields that are white in the harvest. We know the time is short, Lord, but we don't know how short. In the time we have remaining, Lord, allow us to use whatever it takes to bring people to your cross, that your shed blood may forgive them of their sins, that they may be saved, having the immigration papers to heaven, and being able then to share your gospel with others. Lord, we, we feel revived from last week, but that the revival just makes us so we want to do your work all that much more. And Lord, allow us to see that our labor is not in vain. Show us people that are need to be saved. Allow us to give them the gospel, and then allow us to see your great and salvation come up, come forth the name. And we saw this in your precious son's dear name. Amen. Amen. And with that, uh, come you sinners, poor and needy. What's uh, 302? 302. So turn to him 302. Come you sinners, poor and needy. Every one of you was a poor and needy sinner that someone showed the way, that someone showed the right exit. So now we need to be able to do the same thing with others. So. Let us show others how to get off that highway to hell on a straight and narrow and say, Come, you sinners, for me.
Jesus. If there's anybody here who's never done that, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you need to do that. If you come up right now as we're singing, I'll show you exactly how to do it for his word. That's his garment, not mine. I didn't have it until he gave it to me. I will show you exactly how to do that. And, quite frankly, the church might like it better because I'm not singing if I'm talking that way. That's beside the point. But today is the day of salvation. Give thanks if you're already saved. And then if you're not saved, make today that day. We're not promised tomorrow. And as we're looking outside, I can definitely say it. We're not promised tomorrow. Every day he gives us is a day of grace to be saved.